everyone's name, but I will try my best to remember your pronouns when speaking with you guys. So I'm gonna jump right into our uh, information, information session, there we go. Uh, I don't know what's going on with our projector, um, but whenever you guys are ready, I'm gonna start. Uh, once again, I'll, I'll reintroduce myself. Um, my name is Paris, um, and yeah, I'm happy to be here. I'm glad you guys um, have me here speaking. You can know a little about me and my organization that I'm affiliated with. <laughs> and if you guys haven't noticed, I don't know if I said this, purple is my favorite color. Um, you guys want to see a lot of purple. Um, purple. I was going to wear purple, but I was like, nah, I'm not going to do it for them. Um, and I also have some pamphlets here to you guys, because everyone doesn't want to ask questions, and that's okay. I have literature here that you guys can read. I have my card that has my cell phone number, my office number, which also goes to my cell phone from time to time. Mm -hmm. So if you ever need a gear, information, whatever, you have my card, my email, reach out to me, please. <laughs> Alright, we're good. Um, can everybody see? Can everybody see? We can do the lights. I have a computer here, so I can be able to see regardless. You know, I just want to make sure y'all y'all can see. Okay, great. So as you guys see, that says B Tech and B Tips 2018 Carolinas Informational. Uh, I'm not gonna read this verbatim because I'm aware and hope that everyone in this room can read. If you cannot, it's okay, I will read everything word for word. Um so yeah, that's a general idea. So um We're not moving, so that should go okay, or what is that? Or is this good? We did the icebreaker challenge already, so we don't have to do that again. Um, so as you know, anytime you have an information session, you're gonna have a meeting agenda. Um, I'm gonna try my very best to stick to that. Um, but you guys have a pretty good crowd, so you may get a little warm and comfortable. Um, but as you see, you're going to learn about um, my the advocacy mission and the vision. Um, you're going to learn about the conference that we have host every year. Um, you're going to learn about what I do here in North and South Carolina. Um, we're going to have a small question and answer. There's random pictures of me. Some are speaking. Some are just for the post. Um, post. Okay, so um, this is a little information about the Black Trans Advocacy Coalition. Um, and what it is that we do and how we were founded. Um, I'm not going to read all of that, um, but I'm going to give you the logistics of it. Um, our motto, as you see, is to become the change that you want to see in the world. Um, and that simply means for me, um, if I want change, I have to become that change and lead by example. Um, as you see that our mission is to advocate for so social equality for black trans people. Um, that is our main mission, but we also want to advocate for social equality for trans people as a whole, because we are a family. Um, it talks about where our, um, head our headquarters are located. Um, as you guys see, that's a picture of us um, in the grade, at a conference, doing some work in the community, and our lovely office. I'm not gonna do that, because you guys can see my shadow. So we're gonna go to the next slide. Okay, so <clears throat> within the Black Trans Advocacy Coalition organization, we have what I call two departments. Um, so the first department was the founding department, which was Black Trans Men, Inc., um, which I'm going to refer to or may refer to as BTWI. I'm sorry, BTMI, I'm sorry. Um, and their motto is, one is not born a man, but becomes one. So now you're going to see what I was talking about, uh, which is BTWI, which I'm actively affiliated with, obviously. Um, and our motto is every voice matters. So like I said, in between, you know, in that organization we have two departments. <clears throat> so throughout this information session, you're gonna hear me refer to the TIPS. And as I stated before, um, that simply means Black Trans International Pageantry System. Um, and there you can see what our mission is. Um, you can see, you know, what our you know what, what we believe in, which is the standard of excellence and pageantry and the, rep the 
reputation of excellence in perlepathy in the in, and community service. I'll read that again if that was kind of confusing. Um, <clears throat> oh, there was a shift in the atmosphere. Um, so as you see, this, this slide is going to be in reference to Black Trans Advocacy, Advocacy Conference. It is a conference that we um, host once a year. Um, I will venture to say that it is the largest um, trans conference probably in the world. Um, I know it's definitely the largest black trans conference in the country. Um, um, as you see, it talks about little things, the interesting things that we'll have at that conference. We're going to have over 50 workshops. It's a five-day event. Um, and in that five days, you're going to learn later on in my slide about what it is that we do in those five days. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, and in that picture, we're going to have, we have some of our BTWI and our BTMI family, um, which are wonderful people. And if I'm moving too fast, let me guys, let me, let me know guys. Um, this is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful picture uh, of our family day that we have normally to end our conference, which is very similar to a huge family reunion. There are a lot of people that come to this conference and they literally see their, you know, BT family once a year. And that's at this conference. Um, I'm not sure if this was, I went to this was last year. Um, unfortunately, I did not go to that conference, but I will be there this year. Um, every year they choose beautiful colors. Last year was green. Hopefully this year will be purple. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's really a wonderful day of unity and family, you know, familyhood and sisterhood. And, you know, it's just family reunion, honestly. Um, but yeah, I thought that was a good picture. And like I said, if I'm moving too fast, just let me know. Um, so in that five-day conference, every night or every day, um, we're going to have an interesting event. Uh, we have the Black Diamond Ball, which is just what I said, a ball. It's, you know, a good time, honestly. Um, we have the Trans Mini Fest, which is very similar to like an open mic night, you know, a spoken word, um, speakeasy, you know, whatever you may want to call it. We have the Black Trans International Pageant, um, which you guys see Miss Tiffany Starr and our um, reigning king, Trenton Johnson, um, which is a phenomenal night. You're going to see people in their own way of creativity. Um, we have the um, Black Trans Gala, which is very similar, it's like a, you know, small Golden Globes, it's a very elegant event, you know, we come out in what I call your Sunday's best, um, you know, we're going to give out awards, there'll be keynote speakers, there'll be dinner, it's just a very elegant um, event. And as I stated before, we have the Black Trans Family Day, which is the huge freaking family reunion, like I'm, I'm looking forward to the family, day, honestly. <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm very excited. I love unity. I, I really do. Okay, so, and these are the wonderful dates that we have this year, which are going to be um, April 24th to the 29th. Um, normally, it's around the last week of April most years. Um, we try to stay around that so people can plan each year. Um, this year, it's in Dallas, Texas, which is where it was um, as well last year. Um, and as you, as you see, it's five, it, you know, it's five, it's a five-day event with different um, events, I guess. <laughs> um, so yeah, and the motto this year is journeying together, living in greater truth and healing. That's our motto for this year. Every year there's a different motto or a different message or a different goal or you know whatever word you would like to use. So um, obviously that's another picture of me um, and that is Black Trans International Patrick System State Delegate. Um, I am a state delegate, as you see. I'm Reverend, well, that's a, that's a first. Um, I am a minister as well. I don't know if you guys knew that. I have a Kojic background, Church of God in Christ. Um, but yeah, I'm Reverend Paris Monroe. I'm Miss Black Trans Carolina 2017 2018. My reign is, thank you, <laughs> my reign is from October 20th of 2017 until October 20th, I'm assuming, of 2018. Um, maybe I'll go to internationals and I'll have international reign in there somewhere. <laughs> Who knows? Let's remain optimistic. <sighs> okay, so these are responsibilities as state title holders, state de delegates, um, ambassadors, whatever word you choose to use. Um, elegance, number one. You know, anytime that you're put on a platform to represent a company or an organization in your area, you need to walk in excellence. Um, and our definition of elegance is what you see, you know, to be a role model, to be an inspirational to others in your community. Um, we're going to walk in, well, you can't really walk in, perlamp 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 perl
Um, but you know, that just shows that not only do we raise money, but we also try to give back money to our community. Um, I'm really big on you give freely what someone gave to you. Um, you know, if someone let you crash on their couch, when you're in a place where you're able to let someone crash on your couch, you should do that. Um, you know, that's how we build up our community. Um, and community service. Um, I know myself, I'm a huge on community service. There are a lot of speaking engagements. There's a lot of work that I do that's strictly community service because I don't get paid for a lot of things that I do. Um, this year, I hosted Transgiving in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, we had over about 50 to 100 people that came in. I had it catered. I rented it in a venue. Um, and it was just my way of giving back to my trans brothers and sisters and siblings. Um, so yeah, I'm always doing community service. Um, for those who may not know, I know in the Charlotte area, I feed the homeless every second and fourth Saturday. I may not physically be there, but I have a group of friends that every fourth Saturday and <clears throat> fourth and second Saturday we're out feeding the homeless. Um, because in, and I know you said, well, the homeless people are not trans, but we are human. We are a human race. Um, and in order sometimes to get people to respect you, you have to show them that that you respect them. So that's my way of doing that. Um, as a state delegate, you do have to do a minimum of 250 hours to. Uh, obviously qualify myself I probably do that in a month but you know just a little bit about what our responsibility is responsibilities are um, if someone or if you guys knew someone that wanted you know to pursue this um, I do know that one of the requirements um, that may not be up here is you have to be of the African-American descent um, but you, know, you just gotta put that out there but we're open to all people I see there's a lot of Caucasian people and other people of other nationalities we're open to service every each and indiv individual um, because we're a family at the end of the day. It's just that this specific organization services people, of, trans people of color. But you know, you we have most of our allies are people of other descents. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to put that out there. I don't want you guys to like, well, it's for black people only. I can't love for that. We welcome all people. Um, we love all people. Um, so Miss Black Trans Carolina, they're obviously talking about me. Um, that was me, I believe, at a Christmas. Oh, I know exactly where that was. Um, Charlotte hostess, hostess, hostess is my word. Okay, um, hostess. No, host. There we go. There we go. Host. I don't want you guys to get educated. <laughs> they host the annual LGBT QIA Christmas conference every year. Um, this year I attended, um, and to the right, the left of that picture is my fiance, and to the right of that picture is my fiance's sister. They wanted to go along with me. They asked that we wore ugly Christmas sweaters and I wasn't having it. Um, <laughs> so I put on black like I normally do and I go out. Um, so this is honestly a little bit about me and you know my beliefs um, on why I do what I do. Um, as I said before, I love children. But so it, uh, as you, I'm not gonna read it verbatim, but uh, just like trans, um, oh, come on, I'm, I'm the state representative, as you guys know. Uh, I am one of the few people my age, I'm 22, um, that do, that's doing the work that I'm doing, um, especially with young transgender adolescents or young people. When I say that, I mean I normally work with people between 13 and 30. Yeah, sure, like, well, they're 30, they're older than you, but sometimes it's not about your age, it's where you are in life. Um, that's, that's my heart, because I believe that you know, children are our future. And if you get someone in the most impressionable years of their life, then you can give them the tools, you know, to make them grounded and well balanced, you know, spiritually, emotionally. You can you can you can mold them to be, you know, wonderful adults of society and they'll stand up for what's right on all social levels. Okay. There I am again. Um <laughs> Miss Black Trans Carolinas. So my platform, as you heard, um, our reigning queen, Miss Tiffany Starr, her platform is education. Um, our former reigning Miss um, Talia Cassidy, her platform is Say No to Silicones. Um, and as I said, it's something that's important to you. Well, I am a minister, as you guys know, um, and my platform is bridging the gap between the black church and the black transgender community. Um, I'm not sure if, if any of you guys have ever been to a black church. I'm not sure mm -hmm. if you guys have ever attended a black church. But let me tell you, you can be many things in the black church, just don't be a member of the LGBTQI community unless you making the choir sound good, because then that's socially accepted. Um, <laughs> but that's my platform, bridging the gap between the black church and the black trench in the community. Um, and I believe that my platform will improve nationally. You know, 
among black trans women and black trans men, obviously, and trans people, obviously, um, that, you know, they'll, if, if, we, if we lower that stigma among trans people in the black church, you know, they're able to attend services, you know, where they'll feel comfortable, where they can learn the necessary tools to be spiritually grounded, um, you know, and find religion for themselves. I mean, I tell people all the time, I'm a minister, I'm Kojic, but I don't preach Jesus Christ because that's just my religion. But, you know, whatever keeps you going and keeps you sane, just find religion for yourself. Um, but, you know, once we do that, I also believe, you know, in the church you can learn that you're not just here alone. You know, you, you, you can be assured that you have a support system. You know, I believe that every individual are beautiful and wonderfully made. Um, and I, I truly believe that, you know. So that's part of my, um, my beliefs. Um, I believe once that stigma is stopped, we as trans people can go to church and we can learn to walk in the agape love. Um, for those who don't know, agape is a Hebrew word um, and it means the greatest love of all. Um, it's to love people the way that you love Christ and the way that Christ loved you. Um, and as you see, that's what we're supposed to be learning, um, quotation marks, in the Christian faith, to walk in love, the agape love. So those are my beliefs. That's my platform. That's why I'm doing the work that I'm doing today. Um, hopefully we can bridge that gap. Um, so, my favorite part. Y'all know, I grew up in a black church. We appreciate the money that jingles, but we prefer the money that folds. Um, <laughs> so if you guys want to be a sponsor to me, um, I would greatly appreciate that. Um, we have a link that you guys can go and donate. Um, we take checks. Um, we prefer not to, but you know, you don't want to have access to a computer or you know what have you, it's okay. I am big on paper trail. And we're passing around the offering plate. We appreciate the money that jingles, but we prefer the money that folds. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you guys can definitely be a um, sponsor to me. If you guys don't want to donate directly to that, um, um, Zeke will tell you I also have a sponsorship that I do where, like I said, I feed the homeless, I give back to the community, which I do myself, which you can donate to that as well. I have information on that as well. But I would prefer you donate to this because this is going to get you to Texas. And you're going to have a beautiful woman from North Carolina representing your state. So please donate. Remember the money that votes. Um, <laughs> if today is the 27th, that you guys know, I do believe that the sponsorship will be up until March 1st, if I remember correctly. So we have to move expeditiously. Mm -hmm. It's okay if you cannot. We'll take those donations after. And I think I can still upload those personally. I just don't think that you guys can. If um, I got plastic, could I donate tonight? Huh? If I have plastic, could I donate tonight? Um, I can send you an invoice. All right. We Perfect. can do invoices. Thank um, you. Which uh, you can donate directly to me, and then whatever money you decide to donate, I'll have a paper trail to donate it directly to Beats Up to Zero. Well. Thank so you. So see me after the information, information session. So it's my favorite part. It's question and answer. I've done a lot of talking. Now it's your opportunity to talk, ask me questions or things that you're unsure of or something you may not know. And I'm going to try my very best to answer it. If I may not be able to answer it, there's two beautiful young ladies here that can probably answer it. And I, and I want to do a um, testimonial too. Like Absolutely. You know, I love a good testimonial. <laughs> <laughs> Were there any questions or anyone? Any questions? Or would y'all let me just do my little testimony and just give our pieces in, then we go into that. But wait, before we do that, because I want to finish this last show and turn the lights on, because I'm going to walk in the dog. Um, <laughs> If anybody has any questions and they're too shy to ask, that's okay. I understand that people are bashful. We have Trashawn Pate, which is our Beat That Chair, which you can email, ask the questions. You have the lovely Reverend Harris LaBelle Monroe, um, my email, my card, and my number. So, yeah, so let's let Ms. Kalia Hassanon speak. I better turn on the lights. <laughs> So I, I really wanted to be here today to um, to speak to y'all only because of the fact that Harris is a wonderful delegate for the North Carolina region, but at the same time she hasn't had the experience of actually going to the Black Trans Advocacy Conference as I have. Uh, this year was uh, last year made my second year going back to the conference. Um, through my work through my first year of being Miss Black Trans International, I was also nom nominated as uh, and awarded Miss Black Trans Women's Inc. Women of the Year. 
Um, now, I, I wanted to give you all my experience of, of attending this conference. I personally didn't know a lot about the conference, but I knew with the platform and the campaign that I had, I needed to elevate it some type of way. And I knew, you know, pageantry can be kind of iffy, it's just cutthroat, it's all about politics, but this is something about the community. So I knew that they would pick the best person to represent the community, and I chose to go to this system. Um, I was in a really weird predicament. I had a friend, ex-Judy, in Dallas, <laughs> Texas, um, who said, oh, Talia, come on, you can stay with me for the week. I'm like, okay, cool, cool, cool. So I drive all the way down there, get down there, and find out that she doesn't even have a home. So I go over to the host hotel where the Black Trans Advocacy Conference was at, and I was really distraught because I didn't know anyone. But one person I knew out of the hundreds that were there. And I told that one person, I was like, look, I don't even have a room to stay here. Within a second, he grabbed 10 more people, and they all got on their phones finding me the cheapest rates possible, and they got me a hotel room for the week. I don't know these people. But this is the type of love that I received. Um, the beginning of the conference starts off with workshops, all different types of workshops, non binary <coughs> trans men, trans women, and you can gather as much information as possible. Um, those are the first three days. We also have a keynote speaker. Keynote speakers always have a topic. They, they're, they're very, oh, I miss the keynote speaking every year because of the pageant. It's, it's going around the same time. But I've always catched um, clips of it. I'm just sitting here like, there's so much more I can learn. Um, the pantry system is um, is a phenomenal system. You won't see anything like it. Uh, I, I always tell people every day that advocates are born daily because mm -hmm. all of us have a passion for something. Mm -hmm. It's just that sometimes we don't know how to direct that passion to make it grow. You know, my passion was say no to silicone injections. All I did was show people my chest and say, yeah, I lost my breast because of silicone injections. And I did a live video on Facebook and that was it. But ever since I won the pageant, I have been featured on TV shows for um, on different um, topics of silicone injections. I lost my gay mother from it. I had to be featured on the news again for that. Um, I've had a chance to, uh, I wanted to build a 501c for my organization, my, my campaign, but I realized it was a lot of hard work. What did the Black Trans Advocacy <coughs> Conference do? They said, give it to us, and we'll keep it as a 501c, but it's yours. So now, my campaign that I thought would never go anywhere is now a nonprofit. Wow. Um, I was also able to um, move some grounds. The federal, um, the FDA, which uh, organizes and, and permits certain drugs, uh, they've always said that silicone injections was something that wasn't good for your body. But that's all they said. But since I have been pushing my campaign so much, now the FDA has actually come up with a long list of why it's not good for the body. And now they're actually prosecuting every silicone doctor that is actually known to do it. Wow. And I've actually been in touch with the FBI and the Miami field agents wow. as of today. Hmm. She even heard it in the phone call with me. <laughs> There's some people getting locked up because uh, it, it seems like our community is hurting our community and it should not happen. We're sitting here trusting the people in our own community to make us a beautiful woman, but they're the ones that's actually killing us. And we need to stop that. And That's all right. of these things wouldn't be happening if my, in my life if it wasn't for the Black Trans Advocacy Conference. Now, Paris talked about two different um, sectors that we have, which is Black Trans Men, Inc. and Black Trans Women, Inc. There is also another um, section called Anchors. And Anchors are the um, spouses of trans individuals or non binary individuals that are holding us down, hence the name Anchors. <laughs> so we do have that organization as well that is also slowly growing. Now what we are looking for is more connections because the more um, places that we can reach out to is the more places we can branch out to and start to build a family. We're trying to look for organizations where we can partner with, um, partner with so that they could actually speak at our events, we can speak at your events, and it could be a collective learning experience. So um, I just wanted to give that little nitpick, my little testimony of the conference, so y'all can know that this was a life changer for me. I was just that trans woman who just went to work, went home, went to work, went home, that was it. I didn't know anything about the community. I, did, I was actually, I didn't even know what pronouns was. 
<laughs> I'm telling y'all the truth. I'm just sitting here like, uh, yeah, I was country, y'all. I'm from the country. I'm from Brunswick, Georgia. So I'm just sitting here like, um, what? I have to ask for what? Pronouns? What? I didn't know anything about advocacy. It, it, it's, it's amazing how much I have learned from complete strangers. Everyone at the conference has a different platform. And when I say it's hundreds of people with different platforms, you will not understand how many platforms are in this world. <laughs> so I'm just like, and, and, and the whole time I'm just sitting there taking notes. Okay, all right, what did you say? Slay it slower, slower. Okay, that's literally how it was my first year at the conference. And I won't, I will never miss a year, never miss a year. And I hope to see as many faces yes. in this building as possible there. Um, even if you think that it may be hard to get there, we have scholarships as well so that you can raise money to even attend the conference. And I All actually right. myself, as a piggyback, I am going to sponsor um, someone this year to go to the conference mm -hmm. out of my own body. I'm going to sponsor somebody. I figure out who it is that. I have, if you want to be sponsored, hit me up via email or Facebook, whatever you can get me. I'll put you on that list. I literally just do a drawing. Um, I do it live so you guys don't think it's rigged. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I will be sponsoring someone as well. That's it, folks. Any questions? Amazing. Uh, you talked about how you had <coughs> two pageants, the trans man pageant and the trans uh, women pageant. Um, is there anywhere that falls in between that? Because, like, obviously, like, I could be like, well, why can't we do the trans man pageant? <laughs> like, I don't. <laughs> But there is a, it's almost an issue of supply and demand. Okay. Um, at this point in time, we would like to the pageant to grow. We we actually tried it at one point in time. It was called the Newcomer Division. And the Newcomer Division, where it's a, a division where you didn't have to be trans, you just had to be allies of trans people. Um, uh, although we were not seeing the quality that we needed. So it's about supply and demand. Now, we have more people going to our corporate office at DC, emailing them, sending yeah. them messages on Dallas. Facebook. I mean, did I say DC? That's yeah. all right. Okay. Oh, it's a D. <laughs> <laughs> so we have more people emailing or sending messages to our corporate office in Dallas. And we have that information as well. I can find the spot for yes. you want. Um, and so that they know that there is a demand for this type of system to, with, under this umbrella of an advocacy, then it could be something possible in the future. I'm saying because like I've done pageants before. Um, I was North Carolina Entertainer of the Year um, <laughs> uh, back in the day, um, but I don't fit into like the man or like woman category personally for me. Like I could I can go into the masculine way, but like. <laughs> so let me piggyback on what she just said. Some there is a space reserved for you as well. We have a uh, trans manifest. That's going to be on Wednesday. So, and how that works so that we can make sure, like she said, supply and demand. If you come to the conference and the more people come and the more that we see the numbers at trans conference, because that's the place you can just sign up. You'll be able to inbox me or email me at the conference. Um, and as we see, that there's more room and more space when we when we build the numbers, we'll definitely make the space for it. Because at this particular conference, we want no one left behind. Okay. We want everyone to feel safe. There's a space for all of us there. And at the conference, it's a big collection. So as we continue to collect and identify the things that we need space for, that's how we can create a space for you and whomever else need a space for them. Does that make sense? Yeah. So everyone is welcome. Yes. Um, I know the conference is called Black Trans, but everyone is welcome. We concentrate on trans, but even if you're not trans, no matter how you identify, there's a space there for you. We have allies, we have anchors, binary, non-binary, and the more that we have there, we'll be able to have spaces. Like um, she was saying, the um, conference is going to be informational education. There's going to be different classes, and we'll have breakout sessions. And maybe the trans women will go over here, the trans men will go over here. Binary people, there'll be a space for them as well. So the more we have the numbers, and the more we have people coming for the interest, we'll always have a space for you. I guarantee you. No one will be left out without a space. You're welcome.
Prayer request. <laughs> prayer request. Prayer request. I just yeah. have a question for for you. Okay. Because um, what intrigued me about I think the Facebook post was your platform um, and bridging that gap with the black church. And so I guess my question is, what? So you've been doing this for how long? This your term. My reign? Yeah, your um, reign. My reign started in October, so I've been okay, so doing it as a platform for okay. October, but I've been doing this since I became a minister, February 6th of 2016. Okay. Because um, I experienced sex stigma firsthand as right. a trans woman of clergy. Right. So I was just, I guess I was asking, my question is how have you, have you found any success in bridging that gap? Um, Where have you found your, your allies and, um... Are you looking at cross denominations? Absolutely. Okay. Um, absolutely. I have found some success. Success. Okay. I, I found success in my local area. Um, I know in Charlotte, um, in Greenville, South Carolina. I'm linked with some churches there um, that I call your traditional mom and pops mm -hmm. churches, mm -hmm. um, and they're open to all people of all mm -hmm. lifestyles, all whatever you want to be. Mm -hmm. um, so I've had some success. Um, I know my church back home in Durham. Someone said they were from Durham. I lived there for nine years. I graduated from CE Jordan, go Falcons. Um, but I know in my church back home, um, it's a traditional Kojic church. Um, but with our new apostle, when she came in, she said, I don't care what you do, what you look like, you're a child of God. Um, so I found, you know, success in that. Um, I want the, but success locally is not enough for me. You know, I want people from, like you said, all denominations, mm -hmm. Kojic, AME, mm -hmm. um, whatever. I want you to have a safe space wherever you worship, whether it's the mass, mm -hmm. whether it's the cathedral because you're, cold, um, because you're um, Catholic, mm -hmm. wherever you worship where you find that space where you're getting that nourishment that you need, I want that to jump off as, I guess, wildfire. Mm -hmm. I'm working on it. It takes baby steps. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, I'm one of the few people my age that's doing this, but one is not enough for me. Two is not enough for me. Mm -hmm. My job's not going to be done until, like I said, we're able to bridge that gap. Mm -hmm. So I have had some success, but that's not enough for me. Okay. Thank you. Zeke had a question. Yeah, um, I was just wondering if you could talk a little bit more, maybe the three of you, uh, maybe about how um, BTAC kind of got started, a little, a little so deeper into the history, maybe, okay. if that's possible. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to think, make sure I don't forget any parts. Um, the history of, um, was, uh, BTEC was started and founded by Carter Brown, um, which at first the conference was just for trans men, uh, which is the reason why it started as Black Trans Men, Inc. Um, later they found that there was more black, uh, trans women who wanted to be a part of this because it was a great idea. So the second year they started the Black Trans Women, Inc. and, and pretty much piggybacked off of the two. Um, and that was the founder of that would also be Kamarion D. Anderson. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so it's Carter Brown and Kamarion D. Anderson. Huh? Or D. I, I always or forget D. the D. You can never forget the D. You have to say Kamarion D. Anderson. Um, and they was one of the founders. Uh, Carter Brown's wife, which is S.B. Brown, um, cis woman, but definitely an ally to the community, are um, pretty much the ones who are making sure that this conference runs every year. Um, they also have regional um, branches. We have uh, New York. We have a Black Trans Women Inc. and a Black Trans Men, uh, Men Inc. In, in New York. Georgia, the Carolinas. We would like to have a South and a North Carolina, but guess what? We'll take it where we can get it. So, 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 <laughs> so we're just gonna say the Carolinas for right now. California. And we also have Kansas and California. And California. California. Um, would we like to have more? Um, branching off and we're trying to do that the more people we have come to the conference we're, we're now asking them would you like to be a leader for your state mm -hmm. and with that leader we could also have delegates such as Paris Monroe and they could be somebody that would be the ambassador of that state which would also compete at the national level of the pageantry system but ultimately that branching off just is, is our way of creating wildfire so that there is more information in, in every state. I hate to see states where we have people in Wisconsin, Connecticut, Iowa, and you're just sitting here like, South Dakota. It's, it's like, it's like, ooh, trans people. <laughs> I, I, I really just, I mean, you have, for so long I've actually lived my life and didn't know I was trans. And that's only because I didn't have them around me to let me know that, look, this is what you have the potential to be. And it's not something that you should be afraid of. Mm -hmm. 
So I, we need to continue to branch out with that, but it started with uh, Carter Brown and Kamara MC Anderson in both of Texas. Which who are phenomenal people. They answer their phones anytime I call. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to think, was they? And I want to say founding year, 2011. That was the first year we had the conference. I think the year before that was the founding year. Six years. We six years. So I will have to go. <laughs> well, actually, no, I'm sorry, sorry. The pageant has been around for six years. Crawford seven. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and was there any more questions? Is it too late to register to go to the conference? No. no. <laughs> uh, let me tell you this. Like this. this. <laughs> oh, this here. Uh, the conference is actually, um, for the most part, the conference is actually free. Mm -hmm. Our informationals, we do not charge for informationals. We don't charge for workshops. Um, now, there are some some things that are with a, a fee, but at the same time, we're not trying to break your pocket because we understand a lot of people have to travel, and traveling isn't always expensive. The Trans Manifest show, which is $15. The pageant is $15, and I will guarantee you, you'll never go to a pageant less than $15. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's sure. a national pageant. Uh -uh. Uh, national. Um, also, we have the Black uh, Trans Gala Awards. It's 35. It was like 30 somewhere like that. 35, 35 or 40. Or 30 35. 35. 35. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and that's a whole conference. Yeah. You could get the whole conference. I want to say it's one fit. With registration. But that comes with your t shirt. That comes with the family fun day. And the whole shebang. Can you put up the date again for me? Please? Absolutely. And the family and fun day, y'all, if you've ever been to um, just. Y'all ever seen the? Have y'all ever seen the movie Soul Food? Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Do you remember how the family got together? They're just all eating and talking about Big Mama this and come on over here, Aunt Sally and all. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's what it is. I'm looking forward. I, to I left the conference with so many brothers, sisters, aunts, oh. uncle, grandparents. Mm -hmm. I don't think I could ever um, feel lonely a day in my life. I mean, literally, there are. <coughs> you know, I, I I got a Facebook request right after VTAC from Carter Brown, who requested for me to add him as the sponsor. As my wow. and, and I'm just sitting here like, you know, it's like, you know, I, I really needed that because uh, yeah, at that point in time, I really didn't have that connection with mm -hmm. a, a father figure. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's enjoyable. We always go out to a ranch. Um, it's open to children because it's we a do clean know ranch. A lot of people. <laughs> I was concerned. But, you know, it's it's clean. Clean. We do realize that a lot of people in our community do have children. And we don't want people to feel like they uh, have to find babysitters. No, bring your children along with you because it is open to kids. Um, our, the owners of the conference have children. They bring their children as well. They have kitty um, activities for them at the family day. Um, we've had a bull to pet one year. Of course, we didn't want to get too close because of the smell. Um, and it's those big horns. Um, yeah. Um, it, we have horses and different type of games. It's a family owned ranch. Um, they're very active with us. We make sure that we coach every uh, venue that we go to, including the hotel on pronouns. Um, they're extremely respectful whenever we do get there. And if they're not, then that's the end of their days. But ultimately, <laughs> she's not kidding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, they're, they're actually very respectful to us and it's very welcoming. The city even welcomes the Black Trans Advocacy Conference. So, mm -hmm. they sure that's a lot of money right there. <laughs> <laughs> um, to answer your question more in depth, um, Zeke, mm -hmm. it's if you register, register early, like prior to March 1st, you can lock in that 150. From my understanding, registration is the pageant. It's not for registration officer. Mm -hmm. False alarm. I'll be no, the registration is, is completely one fifty. No matter the pageant, no matter when it's paid. Even it's if you up. pay the day of, but I would advise against that because yes. you want to be able to register in advance. Because oh, and it comes with the t-shirt. The yep. t-shirt then and the fancy bag. When we were in the green, mm -hmm. that's how you get a t-shirt. Also, so. it, it gives you a chance to uh, let us know who you are as a person. We do understand that um, there are some people who are stealth. Well, and we don't, and we have lanyards for people who are self, you know, so mm -hmm. if we see a different color lanyard, there won't be any videos of you, no photographs of you, but at the same time, we respect you for being who you are, but we don't want to out anyone. Mm -hmm. But uh, oh, Just to piggyback on her, the importance of registration, because if you, as you're registering, you'll be able to give information, therefore that will let us know what type of spaces we need to add, because if we see, you know, 75 people come and they say 
they want, uh, they identify as they, them, and those, we will definitely communicate that and we will definitely have space tailored for you. And if we see anchors coming, we'll have spaces dedicated for them as well. And if you have spouses, make sure you bring the spouses. And I, I want to let me take a back about this. Um, a lot of times I speak about the black trans at the conference, and I get a lot of flack over that word black. Mm-hmm. Now, and it's true, believe it or not, because people think that it's, and, and I know Paris has said it a, a few times, that the, we don't want people to think that if you're not black that you can't attend. But one of the things that we've realized in the black community is that we don't know about our own community. And since it was founded by black people, we want to make sure that our community knows and understands their real heritage. Mm-hmm. And at the Black Trans Advocacy Conference, we learned that. You know, my first year, people were walking around after praying and said, Ashe. And I'm just saying, like, I, first I thought they cursed. So I'm like, I just cursed after prayer? And then they was like, no, that's part of our heritage. I'm saying, like, oh, Ashe. And then they started walking around and said, Ashe. That's something that we were doing. Um, all different type of, um, we even did this uh, little closing ceremony last year where we all poured water into uh, a that was our, That was an opening? Okay, it was a Was it? Yeah, because we got the, uh, the cloth. Mm-hmm. That was closing. That was the opening. Plants. The plants was closing. Porter plants. Yeah. Yeah. See, that was a closing. Yeah. See. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was her ran away. We got the kids that closed in the opening. But we had a, a ceremony where we had a um a large we got a large flower pot and we all poured in seeds and then we all watered the seeds and we all told um uh, we spoke our intentions mm-hmm. aloud. Mm-hmm. See how you are saying uh-huh. mm-hmm. see this is things that I did not know. Um we also took a little bit of water that we keep with us and we took home mm-hmm. and we also came home with a little plant that we can water with that plant and grow our intentions. Mm-hmm what we really mm. want out of this world. Mm. You know, things like that you don't Thank see. You know. But at the same time, that was a cultural thing that our yeah, culture so has forgotten. That's so exciting. So, so, <laughs> <feeling like you're laughs> that's not so much better than feeling Lord Jesus. <laughs> but, those are the, but that's the reason for the whole black part, is that we're trying to learn ourselves. And hopefully we'll have more conferences even in the future who can really just really show culture. And can I say this? to add to um, speaking, and mind you, um, I'll give my testimony. Last year was my first, just to show you the power and the energy um, of this conference, and because I know that there are other conferences in the world that I will not mention, (laughs) but I do know I'm a part of the best conference, and I'm not saying this just because I'm a part of it, I'm saying this because I've lived it, I've experienced this greatness. I remember um, Espy, who is Carter's wife, she always say, like, like, trans conference, it's love, it's love, it's love. And I'm like, okay, that might be something y'all throwing out. Cliche. <laughs> so, I'm thinking it is cliche. Mm-hmm. This lady and I, we live in the same city. We live in the same city. <laughs> and I don't even speak to each other. We did. We knew each other, Sorry. but we had differences. But because of the love and the passion the for the it. community, how it brought us together. You know, um, we're, we're not going to go into what the differences is, but the love and we have the passion for the community and the drive for the same thing. We went to the conference. We went from not speaking to joining forces, forces, coming, doing makeup sessions together. We shared rooms together, you know, and just the love. And we realized it's bigger than she and I and bigger than what separates us. There are things bigger that connect us. And I know for me personally, it has completely because I'm a pageant girl, and we bridge pageantry and advocacy. I'm an advocate. I didn't know nothing. I didn't know what no advocate was. I didn't have time for that. I didn't even know I had advocacy in me. You know, I, I need my crown. I'm booking and I need my crown. That's what I was about. And then she was like, 
girl, you passionate. Girl, you passionate. Girl, no, I want to work. You know, and I realized I had been doing the work. And I just had to sharpen my tools and direct my energy to the work that I have already been doing. And now I'm traveling the world as Miss Black Trans and I'm speaking publicly you know, about my experiences. One of the best things I can honestly say, my new best friend is my son. You know, I met him at our conference in Georgia when we had our um, Georgia conference. I met my son in October, and if you ask anybody that know us, you would think we've known each other for years. I thought that until she just said that. He <laughs> is my new best friend, and so, there's a space there, there's love. I mean, the love that he pours on me and I pour into him is life changing. Because he was in my same city, not knowing where to go, not knowing where to get guidance from. He came to the conference and we've been joined at the hip every day. If you look on his Facebook picture, I'm in every picture. You know, literally, I'm in every no picture. Cliche. This little boy is at my house three times a week, and he lives 40 minutes away. But the love there is genuine, it is true, and there's no other conference that you're going to get education and personal one-on-one. -on -one. I, I can tell you, you know, most CEOs of companies, all this, thousands of people, you can go there, and the owner, who is Carter Brown, he knows my name by heart. My phone number is in his phone, not just because I'm a queen, but just because... You know, yes, the love is love. genuine, and, and we connect. And when you leave there, it's going to be like, and I, everything she said, oh, well, you're going to go, and it's going to be family. And I'm like, okay, girl, it's going to be another conference, be more queens, more people in drag, more trans folk. But it really, well, everything she said came to pass. You know, and I feel the connection. I feel the love, you know. Do we have disagreements like real brothers and sisters? Yeah, because me and her stop speaking again. But now we speaking again. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, that's just how it is, you know? But that's and real love. That's yeah. real love. And it, we stand in our truth. You know what I'm saying? I love her, and I know she loves me. We don't always mix all the time. We probably mix like oil and vinegar, maybe. I love good business. But we got we work together. <laughs> I love good business. So, but I, I encourage you all, if you can, and I know a week seems like, girl, I can't do the whole week. Even if you can just come Thursday, do Thursday, Friday, Saturday, you know what I'm saying? Maybe you can do three days because if you get there Thursday, you'll get the pageant. But you might need to get there Wednesday. <laughs> I need to see you in the manifest show. Come on through. <laughs> or if you promise me that you're coming by, I'll give you a deadline. <laughs> okay, Let's see, April 1st. Yeah. I'll get you on the show so you can entertain. Oh, at the right. yeah. Yeah. But you got to bring your people to clap for you then. That's right. I don't need other people. I mean, you going to make I, their I, I make your man. Uh, you <laughs> so let me yeah, find out by April 1st, and I'm going to make a space for you. Oh, uh, what about that? <laughs> the, the experience, the, the experience is, is actually phenomenal. Um, Truth be told, I've never experienced so much love before in my life. Mm -hmm. and, I, and when I heard that there was going to be hundreds of trans people in one spot, I just all I could think of was, let me make sure I get my weave on. Let me make sure all my outfits cook because I know she's going to read me. Let me tell y'all, I could literally walk around bald-headed with a t-shirt on and some torn-up jeans, and I was still going to receive the love. When I go back home to Atlanta, it's all about the real housewives of Atlanta. Look, don't see how I'm looking right now. So that's what they mean. That's what you get back in Atlanta. But in Dallas, I never heard one argument. I never saw one person not trying to help somebody. It was always people that came to the conference. Got, they didn't even have enough. <laughs> there, there was some people who came to the conference that really wanted to be there so bad that they didn't have enough money to eat. That's how badly they wanted to be there. But we actually we, we see that and we make sure that they eat as well. Um, my last day of the conference was this Sunday. We always have a brunch before we leave. And I am caught on so many photos crying my behind off mm. because I didn't want to go home. Mm -hmm. And that's that's a really hurtful feeling that I literally wanted to pack up and move. I even called Espy and said, where can I stay? 
that's how much that of love we felt there. Mm. So we just need to get violent. That's let me say it. this yeah. also to help with the fees. We also provide room share. We do. So um, the hotel is a nice hotel, and if you need to, you can do a room share. Let's just say for the week, it might be six hundred dollars. Last year, she and I shared rooms, so it was like three hundred feet. So. Um, <laughs> no, the room is actually big enough for three. Yeah, we have. No, they're actually, um, they're actually suites. Every room is a suite now. So, um, so there's actually a, a private bedroom area that has two beds. <laughs> so there's a, a bedroom area that has a pull out. So it's, it's it's more cost efficient. Now. Yeah. So if you, however, you have to do, like, if you have to do a room share, if one person just register for the room and everybody else register for, the, hey, y'all can bring sleeping bag. Mm -hmm. That's your choice. We just want you to get there so you don't miss this opportunity. Just come. Y'all got me hyped to there say, it, man. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, so. How do I call out a wedding? And one thing, yeah. she said there was no argument. There was lots of church. argument after I smoked <laughs> <laughs> them up. I won. It was 18 girls in the pageant. I smoked them up. <laughs> yeah, girl, yeah. And if you look at pictures of the pageant, I was mad because I didn't want to give her my crown. Uh, <laughs> wait, you had to give up the crown? Like, you didn't yeah, even keep your crown? Yeah, she was Miss Black Trans. I had to crown her. Oh, no, I kept my crown. Oh, you said, what's so up? I had my crown. Every crown is customized. I don't like customized. this pageant. I don't get to keep it. Every crown is customized <laughs> for Ooh, the that's, queen. That's Ooh, my well, gift back. I actually um, yeah, embellish yeah. every crown. There'll be some um, purple in there if I win. Yeah, she'll probably want purple. What's that about? Hers Maybe <laughs> purple, right? I use Sharpie. You can just change the color of the stone. Mine is Sharpie. Sharpie and clear can't even call that shit. Stay on. Make it work. Oh, you know what you're right. doing. Right. Yeah, yeah. I got, I got a uh, blue stick in my mustache right now. I know that. Slick it down. Girl. Slick it down. So, but was there any other questions, maybe? Comments? Dixie? Concerns? Don't be, and, and don't be embarrassed to ask any questions. It you sounds like, like an incredible, yeah, it sounds like an incredibly transformative experience, and I'm wondering how you heard about it. I actually heard about it because the year before, I actually helped uh, Mr., a former Mr. Black Trans in a national company the past. His name was Richard uh, Jeremy. Uh, and he was saying, oh, Celia, I need this, I need this, because we're getting ready to, I'm getting ready to compete for a pageant. I'm like, well, what pageant is it? He's like, oh, Mr. Black Trans in a national. I was like, okay, cool. It wasn't until after he won the pageant that I found out that there was a Mr., I mean, a Miss Black Trans in a national, and there was a whole conference. So I'm just sitting here like, why do you tell me that? <laughs> so um, the title has actually stayed in Georgia. Um, we ain't got no potential for Georgia, don't get nervous. But the, the title has actually stayed in Georgia for the last three years. Okay. Um, well, we're going to bring it home minutes. to North Carolina. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> Nobody from Georgia's competing this year, I can actually honestly say that. At least I don't know of anybody. You don't know. <laughs> but yeah, that's how I found out about the conference, um, just through Facebook. But we're, we're trying, uh, with, through him and Facebook, um, we're trying to make ourselves more known. We do have a website, which is blacktrans.org, for more information that y'all may have. And I have one all these beautiful templates. So, since you asked how did uh, we hear about it, how did you hear about this informational? Because uh, I work here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, mind you, um, how do you all hear right. about information? Yeah. Because I know yeah, your Facebook, Facebook is a good way. Okay, so them? all of us are Facebook gurus. Twitter. So, um, Twitter. Twitter. Okay. I'm not so, so we will, um, <laughs> if y'all follow um, me, I'm Tiffany Starr, T I F F A N Y S T A R R, two R's. Just remember Tiffany Starr with two R's on Facebook. You can follow me, and you will definitely see all of the information about the conference and the pageant on Facebook. So, if anyone's looking for it, that's what we're You don't know, but we family. Yeah. Really? You gonna mm -hmm. start two, two mm -hmm. R's? Mm -hmm. You have to earn them R's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Where your people from? Uh, here, Tennessee. Well, I'm from North Carolina. I'm a former Miss North Carolina, mm -hmm. too. Miss Durham. I've heard someone say Durham. Mm -hmm. I'm a former Miss Durham, too. 
And I'm a cast sign, so I think we probably cousins too because you said your favorite color is glitter, and that's the cast sign thing, glitter. So, yeah. We all family. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so, are there any more formal question concerns? Anything you will leave here with? Or, or anything that you've heard so far that you would like to probably see differently? Can't comedy. I got a little strength. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of the things I'd love to the One of the things I love to hear about and talk about is um, is family and forming our families as as trans people as trans people of color and how how critical that is for survival. Because I know for me, if I did get taken in by Buffy G, who was this amazing amazing black butch who taught me how it was to be a black lesbian and then later on when I became trans I would not I wouldn't be alive I know that um, so I didn't mean to testify but <laughs> <laughs> but I, I just I, I love hearing those stories and, and letting people out there know um, how critical and how vital that is for us to be with each other and alive and, and helping each other because so many of our uh, our blood families you know they're not there for us in the same ways or they're not there for us at all so I just I just loved hearing when you were sharing about your son and how your son's you know <laughs> up at your house three times a week oh and he's God. like you know 40 minutes away so I think that's interesting like I legitimately well, thought like until yeah. she said that but see <laughs> you know and, and it's so funny that my my son is under me so much someone told him the other day, you look just like your mom. <laughs> they tell them that all the time. But if you, feed them, if you feed them enough, they'll start looking like you. <laughs> say, say say. Let me say this. And it's not a racial thing. However, our culture, culture in brown people is a little bit different. There's a lot of stigma, you know, as it relates to just being, um, living your authentic life. So, in our culture, there is a lot more extended family or adopted family. So you will hear a lot, this is my son, that's my daughter, you know, whatever. And, and the reason being because in our community, we don't get as much support. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like he was saying, sometimes that support can be the difference between you stepping off that ledge or holding on because... You know you have someone at home, someone to look. A lot of people, how many of us know of someone um, who can't go home for Christmas, mm -hmm. who can't go home for Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. who family has just literally turned their back on them? And I just, you know, that's not my experience, but I know friends. I, my best friend who passed away, he didn't go home, and he never could go home. Well, he went home, but he was living a lie, you know? I have a um, a cousin whose family, you know, kind of shunned <coughs> him. I can remember the first time my cousin Michael, we went to Baltimore to his um, grandmother's house, and we were eating. And this is going to be very emotional, so y'all forgive me. But we were there, and we were all playing, and we were all experienced. You know, family, it was a little mini family reunion. And we went, you know, and Alex said, you know, y'all come on and eat. So everybody get in line, and we're standing in line, and I see my aunt go to the top of the refrigerator, and she grabbed the plate. It was in a paper bag. It was in a paper bag, and she pulled it out, and she handed Michael this cup and this plate. And I'm thinking, no one said anything, but you knew. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, he's eating out a paper plate. And I immediately left and went to the car. Mm -hmm. And my cousins them came out, and it was like, well, what's wrong? What's wrong? He has to eat in the, out of a paper, a paper plate. It was a little plastic thing. And if he cannot eat with us as a family, I can't eat with you. And finally, you know, I was so upset that, you know, everybody was in the house like nothing happened. Y'all see this. Y'all see this. If that's not the biggest discrimination I have ever witnessed in my life, I can't be a part of it. So where does Michael go? Where's the space for him? That's not fair. And that's the kind of thing that we have to stay in together. No matter where we come from, no matter what walk of life, we're still together. We're family. My son, you know, 
his family is disconnected. He don't have no problem now. He's very connected. As Paris was talking about Thanksgiving. Yeah, I host all holidays at my house. Guess what we, we had, uh, what did we have? We had Thanksgiving at my house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had Thanksgiving at my house. Somebody can't go home. But at 231, there's a home for you. 1308, mm -hmm. Thomas Cole. There's always a home for you. You know, so that's where the love come from. That's what family means to me. And, and when I say I'm serious and I'm engulfed in this thing, I am. I am really into this. It's not just the choice. It's not about the pageant, you know, or whatever. Like, when I say we family, we family. You know, and that's what it means to me. So. And, and. Well, pop. So. <laughs> <laughs> but um, one of the things I have noticed, um, you know, well, y'all don't know. I, that's, just, that's a habit of mine. I always say, you know, like, y'all are actually going to know. Um, <laughs> But my father actually passed away on the 11th of this month. Wow. And uh, my biological father. I, I can honestly say that every day since his passing, I've had someone from the conference reaching out to me to say, are you okay? You know, back in the day, I used to be suicidal. A lot of them know that because I've actually said that to them before. They want to know what's in my head. Mm -hmm. They want to know what resources are around. Where are you at, Talia? Are you in, you're in Riverdale, Georgia, correct? Okay. While I'm getting off the phone with them, they're actually on the phone trying to figure out who's in Riverdale, Georgia that can assist me if I really felt like I was about to jump off the edge. You know, that type of relationship you just can't find anywhere else. I'll see somebody on Facebook posting saying, I don't see the purpose of living anymore. Me, that's not my field. I, I'm not one that can think into the psyche because truth believe, Talia has her own issues. But I can say, okay, so let me see, who is VTech had a platform? Like I told y'all, there's hundreds of platforms mm -hmm. at VTech. I'm gonna find the right person with that platform and I'm gonna call them. They could be in California, this person could be in Georgia. I guarantee you they're gonna find the resources for the individual. And that's the type of con um, kind of connection you will see at VTech. Mm -hmm. This is funny, but not funny. Remember I tell y'all about my son. This dude is in my phone. Y'all on the way back yet? <laughs> and y'all, I actually met, uh, met her son for the first time at our mini conference in Georgia. And I can tell y'all, he was the most quiet person I've ever met. You couldn't ask him any questions because he was like this the whole time. Now you see him on Facebook, he's talking about stardust and he has popping his fan like me and trying to do this. So, <laughs> hello. Hello. Hey. hello. This is my little... Mini-me. <laughs> 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 this little guy came to be tech, shy, scared to speak, under my wing. He has been to one inauguration. He's won his first pageant. He is the national. national a, right, a national. He woke boys. He's a national <laughs> business sweetheart. That's my... My little baby boy. Tell him your name. My name is Darren Starr. All right. Stardust. <laughs> okay, but that just goes to show um, how connected we are with this thing. You know, so. All right, Mama. I love you. I'm about to go somewhere, Paul. All right, love you too. <laughs> He ain't going nowhere. He's going off that phone. Right. <laughs> <laughs> He's very shocked. Are you just take y'all on the way home yet? Boy, I'm grown. Yeah. Uh, so, thank y'all so much. Thank One you, thing, you. um, I encourage every place I go is have everyone stand up in the room. Reach around and give yourself a nice big hug. Because a lot of times we go and we spend time and don't know that we love. So if no one has ever told you they love you or hadn't told you today, you know you've got your first hug and you know you got your first piece of love from you. You're going to get some more because before you leave, I'm going to hug each and every one of you. <laughs> and it, one more thing. Is anyone opposed to taking pictures? If you're not, if I can get everyone up here so we can take a group picture. Please.
Somebody got to get rich. <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 they do have timers. That's what they have timers for. Timer 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 we might. That might be close to some kind of power. Find him, find him, find him. I can just put on a timer because that way we all be in it. It's cool. Okay, that's a little, mm -hmm. that may be too hard. I got the scammer list for tonight. Bring it in, bring it in. Suck it in, suck it in. <laughs> 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 Put your tires in there. Smile. That might be good. We got smile. Yeah, yeah, smile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.